Hey guys, this is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to learn how to play Man in the Box by Alice in Chains, note for note, the entire thing, solo and everything. So uh, before we get started, we need to tune down a half step, just like they did on the original recording. So if you don't know what that is, uh, you'll see the notes in the video's description so you can uh, get that down. Hopefully you know what that is, and you can just jump into that tuning real quick. And here we go. We have a uh, few different sections of the song before the we have the, that fun solo to take a crack at, which is probably my favorite solo of the whole 90s era, so it's a, it's a fun one. So anyway, let's start here with that main riff that I opened the lesson with. Uh, we're going to start here with the low E open string and the fifth fret on the uh, A string. So you just basically play those two. So it's this one, one, one. and had a little muted down up between it. Now, he's kind of ac accenting that fifth fret just a little bit. Sometimes a slight little, little slight bend on it, but it's, he's not really trying to change the pitch. He's just trying to accent that, that note. And then we have this when it kind of turns around and goes uh, back to the beginning. That's 5-7 hammer on the low E string to the 5th fret on the 8th. All right, now um, we have a melody that comes in there over that. Now he's using a talk box through most of the song. Um, so you can, he's kind of accenting those chords while he's doing that. And especially during this melody section, which sounds like this without the talk box. All right, so that's a hammer seven and nine on the D. Quick little hammer, a lot of vibrato on the ninth fret there. Seven on the G, and then hammer seven and nine. So we have this. Then back to the seven on the D string. Seven, then hammer seven, nine, and five. So you can see there's a lot of our bottle on all those notes. Now when you get to the five, you play the five and then hammer five to seven. You pick the five again to hammer to seven. Back to five. A little slight bend over to the seventh fret on the A. Then you do that same little, little turnaround lick that we use in the verse. And then you're back into the same melody again. You do a turnaround lick, and then we play the same thing as the intro for the verse. And then at the very end of the verse, we have this little... So that's the fifth fret on the um, A string, back to the low E. Back to that five, and then pick it again, five to seven. All right, so that takes us into the pre-chorus, which sounds like this. All right, so that starts with um, a power chord at the third fret on the low E. So that's three on the low E, five on the A. Pick that twice, it's heavily palm muted, and then add the seventh fret there on the A string. So you reach up, 
kind of the Chuck Berry maneuver there. So we have that one, two, then reach for the seven, hit that chord once, then do that again. So we have this. And then back to the chord twice. So that's one measure of it. So we have this. For the second measure, just eighth notes on that power chord without adding the seventh there. And then, so that's the next measure. So that's two full measures. Um, and then we repeat for the next two measures exactly what we just played for those two measures. So it looks like this all together. All right, and then we're back kind of to that rhythm, but he starts really accenting that fifth fret on the A string. So he hit that, kind of picks that fifth fret by itself and puts a lot of wild vibrato on it. Then we're back to the normal rhythm and then the ending. So that's seven, five on the A, then seven, six, five on the low E, sit down to three. And that takes us to the first chord of the chorus. So once again. You can slightly bend that third fret there when you. All right, the chorus is the easiest part of the song. It sounds like this. Back to that main riff. So that just starts out with the low E power chord. Just basically the second fret on the A and the D and the low E with it. Then it goes to a G power chord, which is just like a standard G major chord, except you're gonna have the bottom of your middle finger mute the A string. So you can't hear that. So that gets rid of the fourth, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Sorry, it gets rid of the third of the thing, which is the B. So we're gonna just have a, it's just a bunch of G's and D's there. So it makes it a G power chord. Then we go to a D major chord. When you hit the D here, you're gonna add the A in the bass. So you have to let the A string ring with it. Then to the A major chord. Then you hit the low E open. And then the third fret with a little bit of vibrato or a slight bend. Look at that. Let's repeat. So you just keep doing that until we get back to the main riff. So then it goes through the same riffs again. It goes through the verse and the pre-chorus. This time the uh, pre-chorus has a slightly different ending instead of this. It does this. So that's just... Uh, you grab the 14th fret on the G and the B together. Bend them up half slightly. Do it again. Then the 12 on the G and the B. And then 14, 12 on the D. So it is. And then you're back to the same chord. All right, so now we get to the fun part, the solo. So this is a really fun solo to play. I'm gonna play through it real quick, kicking the wah pedal like he's using on the album. And here we go.
All right, so we're gonna start there with just um, a trill between the open D string and the second fret on the D. Now a little trick that you can do there is hold, um, on these three strings, hold your middle finger, ring, and pinky across those strings. You're gonna pick the D string, and then just place your pick against the A string and let your thumb mute the low E. Therefore, you're not going to hit any other strings around it. Even if you do, you're not going to hear them because you're muting everything. So that phrase is this, hammering 7 to 9 on the D, then 7 to 9 on the G, then bend that note up a step and a half. So that is now 9-7 on the G, kind of staccato, then 9-8-7, down to 5, back to 7, then a bend and release there, so we have this. All right, now uh, I really want to kind of show you what I'm doing with the wah here, because it's probably the most important part of the wah in the solo, is you pull, rock the wah back to kind of the heel position here, and then you're gonna do this bend at the 14th fret on the G string. And you're gonna start picking that, kind of a staccato picking, slow staccato picking, uh, where you're stopping it, you're muting it quickly after every single pick. And then as you release the bend, you let the wah go forward. And you're gonna end it with this lick, which is a bend and release of the 14th fret, pull off to 12 on the G, to D, uh, 14th fret. I'll turn the wah off there, so then we have this. So that is kind of a standard blues lick. That's a bend at the 14th fret on the G into a 5th, 12th fret on the B, hammer on 15, pull back off to 12. And do that lick twice. And then you kind of start it again. When you start it again, when you get to the 15th fret, that third time of playing the lick, you bend it up a whole step and just let it um, sustain. Then, that's 12 on the high E, 15, bend and release, back to 12, over to 12, 14 on the G. You can do a long B at the 14th fret there. And that is when the next guitar overdub comes in. So this note's gonna ring over as he comes in with. All right, so let me play that phrase. So you just kind of cut this bend short and then jump into that next lick if you want, just kind of using one guitar. All right, so this sounds like this, this first phrase. So that's third fret on the low E. I kind of grab it with my thumb real quick. And then five on the D, seven on the A. But you can use your first finger here too, it doesn't matter. Then hammer on seven to nine on the G, over to eight on the B. Then we're gonna do a bend, kind of a quick a bend and then mute it. Just do the bend and kill it. And then 10, eight, over to nine on the G. Next phrase. So that's 12, 11, 10 on the B. Over to 12 on the G. To a whole step bend on that 12th fret. And then do a bend there again. Then pick nine, 12 normal to nine to 10 on the high E string.
All right, next phrase. Basically the end of the solo though. So we have this, that's a hammer 12 to 15 on the high E string. Bend the 15, pull up to 12, over to 15th fret on the B. Then we're gonna do this. Quick little down up on the 12th fret across the B, G, and the high E string. Then come back down and grab that third fret on the low E again. You hit the low E real quick, and then you can hit this kind of Hendrix chord, E dominant seven sharp nine, which is the seventh fret on the A, six on the B, I'm mean, sorry, the D string. Then seven on the G, and eight on the B. So we have this. All right, from there, you do a bend at the third fret on the low E, and did the second fret there on the D string. And then we had this last lick for the solo. So that's a bending the second fret on the G string. Then you hit the open B, open high E, back to the open B. And then you're gonna do a quick bend and release at that second fret on the G. Pull off to the G string over to the seventh fret there, I'm sorry, second fret on the D string. And then we're back to the normal chorus. All right, so now there's one little fill that ends the song, just so I don't leave you guys hanging on what that is. It's just simply this. It's the very last thing you hear in the song. That is the 14th fret across the B and the G together. And then hammer on 12 to 14 on the D, and then the 12th fret across the G and the B. And that's it, and hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.